welcome to Das Geek. What we have for you today is the Western Digital Black PCIe Express NVMe SSD that we're going to be installing into the beast because we needed another hard drive. This comes with a five-year warranty, 512 gigabytes. Love NVMe's over standard SSDs. Number one, you don't have all the cabling, the SATA cables and everything that you need to connect. Number two, because it's using the PCI Express lane, you get tons more speed on this. Now, as usual with the tech industry, everything has to be a little bit confusing, so you need to know some things before you go in and order one. This is my son's Nerf gun with the laser pointer, so I could show you what you need to do. So here is the socket we're gonna install the NVMe in here. So this is the M socket on the motherboard itself. Now your motherboard may not have an M socket. You wanna check the manual. In this case, reading the manual is going to be a good thing. If you don't, you can get this card here, which is a PCI Express card, which allows you to connect the NVMe. But notice here and also on the motherboard, we have three different spots. And that's because of the three different sizes. There's actually more that an NVMe M2 can come in. And therefore, that's why you need to look at your motherboard manual to see what yours supports. So if we take a look at the X470's manual here, you can see some interesting information. We have two slots. One you can't see because it is under the Vega 64. The second slot here, which I already have one of the NVMe's under this video card, so we're gonna be using the secondary slot here, the M2 slot has some different specifications for it than the first slot. So the first one is PCIe 3.0 times four, uh, that it supports, the second slot supports PCIe 2.0 times four and SATA at six gigabytes. So you see these numbers 2242, 2260, and 2280. Those actually represent the size, width, and length of the NVMe M2s that your device supports. So if we look at the box, of the Western Digital Black, it's 2280. So that will fit, but it's the longest one here. So we're gonna have to put one of our stoppers onto the motherboard here, spacers, and then we're gonna screw that in, and it's gonna go right into the M socket. And then we'll show you some of the speeds that this device is capable of getting. So this is a look at the Western Digital Black PCIe. You can see it's super small. There are no cables or anything else for all those people who love to hide their cables and keep things very clean inside their machine. NVMEs are a fantastic alternative for you that you don't have to run all these extra cables and things. In this case, it's just gonna go be another one of the, what, six hard drives that I have in this machine now, but we'll see what we wanna put on this. Maybe we'll put an Ubuntu-based distro, an Arch-based distro, We'll figure out something to put on here for fun, or we'll go for Fedora again on this drive and move things from the other NVMe to this one to do some speed tests. But installing is very simple. First, we have to put our spacer in. Now you're either going to have a B socket, an M socket, or a B and M socket that supports both. In this case we have an M socket. I think the B socket has the notch on the other side, but you have to check your motherboard to see which one you support and order the NVMe accordingly, whether you're doing a laptop or desktop. As you can see, when you install this the first time, it goes at like a 30 degree angle here, and that's normal. It will hang out until you push this down onto that spacer and then put your screw in and it will hold it right up against the motherboard like so. Now the NVM M2 is in place and it's secured so we can boot our system, go into our BIOS and set this up. Certain BIOSes will automatically detect this in the settings. Somehow we'll have options for boosting you definitely want to check your manual in this case so you can get the most out of your NVMe M2. There are a lot of people who aren't doing anything in their BIOS after they install them and you're just basically getting standard SSD performance out of them because of that. So what I wanted to show you here is the board explorer for the MSI because your manual actually shows you something really important here and it has it in this fine print that as you connect these M2s you're going to lose access to certain ports. So what you can see is in the M2-2 connector here, it's showing my Pony 120 gigabyte, 
because in the manual it's saying the SATA 3 port will be unavailable when, once you connect that. But because I have the SATA 3 port filled up with a drive right now, it's showing the 120 gigabyte drive versus showing the NVMe that I'd have here instead. So we have to move that SATA connection for the Pony so that this drive can work. And you can also see with the port one, the PCIe 5 slot will be unavailable when installing M2 PCI SSD and M2 dash two slot. So this is just to give you more information on making sure you read your manual because a lot of people are having issues with their NVMe drives outside of ordering the wrong one, number one, and not reading the manual of which things may become inoperable. So we can just switch that around. It's not going to break anything, but you're not going to get your drive to work. I see this a lot in the forum. So hopefully this helps if you're seeing this issue of how to get your NVMe recognized. So let's switch it up and take a look at it again. Okay, so what I did is I moved that Pony over here into the SATA port 2. And you can see the SATA port 1 has my Blu-ray player and all these SATA ports over here are filled up except for these two. Three and four are now empty. And because we know this is going to use SATA 3, now when we go into the Board Explorer it actually shows the Western Digital 512 gigabyte there. Now your motherboard may not have a Board Explorer like this. This is a really cool option. It may have something else entirely, but just keep that in mind that in your manual, you should be able to read exactly which ports will become nullified once you install that drive, especially if you're having issues with connection. So you've got the size of the M2 that you have to be concerned with. Does your motherboard support the correct size? In this case, the X470 supports 2242. That's 22 millimeters wide by 42 millimeters long 2260 or 2280 and this was a 2280 drive it supports either the PCI 3.0 2.0 or 3.0 times 4 lanes there but that depends on which slot you use the first slot here or the second slot so you've got to keep all of those things and then the keying again of what key it supports so if it says M2 then you've got the M key if it says the B key or B and M key, uh, there are variations there. Those are the things you have to consider before you go out and buy one of these drives. So even though it's nice that you don't have to use those cables and connectors, it's a little bit annoying on the standardization of everything and can get a little bit confusing, but hopefully this helps you. So now we can boot into our operating system and test out this drive and see how fast it is. What I'm going to show you now, let's go into this scene is some benchmark tests that I've run. So I'm using GNOME Disk. This is in Fedora 28, but I've tested this, believe me, in multiple operating systems, including Zubuntu 18.04. Very similar results. The only difference is if I'm in Windows. So I had taken Windows completely off of my machine, but in trying to troubleshoot and figure out what's going on with this drive and why I'm getting these results that you see here on the screen, I had to put Windows back on just to see is that Potentially, is it something specific to Linux that was causing this performance issue? So before we get into that, let me tell you the troubleshooting steps that I've taken so far. So obviously, we installed the drive. I set it to PCIe times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 in the BIOS. There is no generation uh, change to Gen 3 or anything option within the MSI X470 Pro Carbon Gaming Board, but I did upload up grade to the latest BIOS. So we did that as well. And none of that seemed to change the speed at all. I put this card, currently what you're seeing is the speed results in the 2.0 slot because there are two on this motherboard. There are two M2s. The first one is a 3.0. The first one is, the next one is a 2.0. Uh, I planned for this one to be in the 2.0 knowing that I'd get a little less performance, but didn't expect this kind of performance specifically with the right speed here. Now, here's where things start to get a little funky. At least I think they're funky. So this is in Windows 10. Now it's the same drive. It's still in the 2.0 slot, but you can see that using Crystal Disk Mark, we're at 1.8, which is fine because if I keep running this, I've seen everything from 1.3 to 1.8. So you're gonna get different sampling depending on how many times you run this. But look at these write speeds. These write speeds are far, far, far more impressive. So the question is, what is really going on here in Crystal Disk Mark? Because at one point down here with the 4K, you're at 100 megabytes per second. But here, we're showing our average write speed at 100. 
But up here in this sequential right, we're showing 839. It, I don't know. I don't know if this is a bad thing, if this is a good thing, but here's where things get interesting. So if that was what you normally get, then maybe I could understand that. But the Plexter, on the other hand, if I pull it up, gets far greater write speeds. You can see it's all across the board. And every time you run these, you kind of get a different result. In fact, let's just run it again for fun. Okay, so you can see the Plexer is getting 2.4 gigabytes per second, 371. The last one was a little higher than that. Like I said, you get different results, but this would have been more in range, whereas the Western Digital is getting such bad results in comparison at only 123. And it doesn't matter how many times we run this test here, it's giving the same results. So I also tried adding heat sinks because this Western Digital NVMe gets quite hot. And look how these results just drop off. Um, but it gets very, very hot. And that concerned me as well. So I put some heat sinks on it and put a cooling fan underneath to see if that would improve and got no performance really out of it, additional performance at all. So the point of this video is this drive seems to suck within Linux, the Western Digital Drive. Now, when I'm using it, it performs fine. I don't notice a huge performance gain or decrease from other drives. So in that essence, I guess it's okay. But I am concerned about the results. Is this a situation where this test here, I don't know what goes into each specific test that CrystalMark is running so that I could duplicate it here in Linux. But obviously these test results show a very different story than in Windows than I'm getting in Linux. And that's just very, very weird to me. So I put Windows, obviously, the last time on this drive here and have been using it. Like I said, it works fine. It boots fine. The speeds are okay, etc. Now I'm going to add a third benchmark result in here because I think this is interesting. So I had a friend who did a speed test using the GNOME disk on their Samsung drive. Now this is the Samsung Pro OEM, I believe, NVMe drive. Now, the OEM version is not like the standard retail version. It's what your manufacturers would put in there. Generally, it's not quite as fast as your retail non-OEM version of it. So if you look up that model number, you can see which one it is here. But it's an NVMe as well. And he ran this in Sparky Linux. And you can see it's getting 1.5 gigabytes per second and an average write rate of 174.6, which, again, slower than the Plexter, on a Samsung drive. So the Plexter is killing it. The Plexter seems to get fantastic results. But as far as the Samsung goes and the Western Digital goes, they do not seem to be getting those results. So either all of our settings are wrong somewhere in a BIOS, there's some switch or something you're supposed to click, which I've gone through them for the last couple of days trying to find anything related uh, and forums and everything else. And the only thing I can see is some people have an option to switch things to Gen 3. My motherboard does not seem to have that option. Some people seem to get better write experience once they update their BIOS. I don't have that. And this is on a Ryzen 7, 2700X. We should be getting fantastic speeds. I think the Western Digital should at least be keeping up with the Plexter and those tests. The question is, do the tests even mean anything or are they complete crap? Who knows? But in either case, if you're thinking of buying the Western Digital Black PCIe, it works. But I'm not sure you're getting the performance you want out of it. And you may want to check out the Plexter instead which makes me now think I need to try a bunch of these drives out to see which one performs best within Linux. And until next time, get out there and feed your brains! Don't forget to subscribe.